Culture, we will review the pornography porn industry, and we will go behind the scenes of making X-rated videos, the story of a male porn star named Dave. This is a course section in human sexuality. Now, pornography refers to sexually arousing material, focusing on the consumer or material intended to produce sexual arousal, focusing on the producer. In either case, we're talking about a very broad range of material and experiences. The debate over pornography has been raging for decades. Some political conservatives, religious fundamentalists, and feminists, which is a strange bedfellows indeed, agree that some kinds of pornography should be made illegal and their producers and distributors jailed. Some liberals, libertarians, civil liberty groups, and some feminists respond to the freedom of expression guaranteed by the Constitution must be preserved, and therefore pornography should not be restricted by law. Now let us review some important terms. We can distinguish between pornography, obscenity, and erotica. The term pornography comes from the Greek word porneria, which means quite simply prostitution, and also graphos, which means writing. In general usage today, pornography refers to literature, films, and so on that are intended to be sexually arousing. The term is often used by the person in the street to refer to any image he or she doesn't like. In legal terminology, the word used is obscenity. Obscenity refers to that which is foul, disgusting, or lewd. It is used as a legal term for that which is offensive to the authorities or to society at large. The United States Supreme Court has had a rather hard time defining exactly what it is obscene and what can be regulated legally. But in the debate over pornography, some make the distinction between pornography, which is unacceptable to them, and erotica, which is acceptable. For example, one sociologist defined pornography as explicit representations of sexual behavior, verbal or pictorial, that have a distinguishing characteristics of degrading or demeaning portrayal of human beings, especially women. Another term for such material is hardcore pornography. In contrast, erotica is defined as different from pornography by virtue of not degrading or demeaning women, men, or children. Such material is also referred to as softcore pornography. According to this distinction, a movie of a woman being raped would be pornography whereas a movie of two mutually consenting adults who are both enjoying having sexual intercourse together would be considered erotica. Now moving on to the porn industry itself. Pornography is big business in the United States. Including in this industry are many different products and services such as internet porn including adult websites, chat rooms, groups, and bulletin boards, DVDs, videos, downloads, and films, magazines, live entertainment, and sadly, kiddie porn. Some of this activity is legal, for example, publishing Playboy online. Some of it is illegal. And an example would be producing videos of children. And some is legal dependent upon the country you live in. 
For example, strip clubs feature in complete nudity and bodily contact. It is impossible to obtain precise data on the economics of pornography. One analyst estimated that in 2006, retail sales of all types totaled almost $13 billion, and current findings is said to be much more. Now let's go behind the scenes to a first-person account in making X-rated videos. Dave Cummins bounces out of bed. He's working today, so he goes through his normal routine. He showers, shaves, extremely close to get a smooth face, trims his fingernails and his pubic hair, applies lotion to his groin, and finishes with hand lotion. He dresses casually and drives to a large, expensive home in Beverly Hills, rented for the shoot. When he arrives, he greets the other performers, mostly young women and men in their 20s and 30s. In this group, Dave is the odd man out. He is 67 years old, balding and looks like he could be a doctor, not the typical male performer in an X-rated video. He represents the quote-unquote graying of porn. It is that appearance that gets him work. Dave provides the realism in the video. He is believable as a doctor, a lawyer, judge, or school teacher in roles where a hard-bodied, bronzed guy in his 20s is not credible. It is Dave's appearance that got him into the industry. That and one other characteristics, his sexual stamina. In his own words, he can quote unquote, get it up, keep it up, not come before told to, and can climax on cue. Dave points to one of the most important qualifications for a male actor in the world of X-rated videos, the ability to perform sexually. Many videos are budgeted to be shot in three days. The script calls for six to nine episodes of sex, each requiring one or more erect penises. The majority are to end with visible ejaculation. In other words, these videos place a premium on male sexual performance, perhaps not surprising in a performance-oriented culture. It costs money and frustrates everyone involved if the male actor has a long refractory period. A man has to demonstrate that he is up to demands. Dave is lucky. He has good genes and stamina. In years past, a man without Dave's talents could not last in this line of work. But a pharmaceutical breakthrough called Viagra has changed all that. Many male porn actors routinely use Viagra, which enables them to get it up and keep it up. Some actors inject the drug directly into the penis. The resultant needle marks usually turn off some of the female performers. As a result, hundreds of men are competing for the available jobs. One consequence of this competition is pressure to perform acts and take risks that the actor might prefer to avoid. Even in this era of widespread knowledge of HIV infections and AIDS, condom use is rare in the porn industry. Some viewers don't like to see them. Some directors and producers don't allow them. And some actors and actresses don't like the result in hassle or change in sensation. The risk became very real in May 2004 when it was announced that five performers had tested positive HIV tests. Another consequence of the competition is low pay. Men may be paid as little as $500 a video. The industry is built primarily around women. 
It is the females who achieve a kind of stardom, whose names appear in the publicity and on the video boxes, and whose bodies are featured in the videos. Relatively new performers may be paid $350 to $1,000 for a film featuring conventional sex. Engaging in unconventional sex or rough sex brings a higher fee. Needless to say, no royalties are paid to the performers. A typical film is budgeted at $5,000 to $35,000. A typical release sells 1,000 to 2,000 copies. It is only the rare hit that brings in a million dollars. Thus, there are constant pressure to keep costs at a minimum. The distribution and sale of the videos reflects the commercialization of sex, turning access to sexual images and sexual gratification to a commodity to be sold for cash or credit. In my next lecture, we will ask the question, should prostitution be legalized? We will analyze different concepts and let me know the pros and the cons.